So I'm going to start a new project. I've already created this project. I'm just here again, the whole cooking show mentality of, um, of, of the way it, we could save time. So I'm going to create a, a blank project in the third person template. Library, we'll use five for manager of this class. And uh, yeah, no starter content, try to keep it as small as possible, just for, just for a test. And all we're doing is showing how um, multiplayer is built into Unreal as a fun little experiment, especially as you, uh, a lot of you folks are getting, gearing into doing uh, thesis projects. Um, give a little, little tantalizing taste. So I'm just going to call my projects. I'm going to delete this in a second. Regular blueprints, uh, no starter content, create. And so what I'm going to do is uh, to even make it as simple as possible, I'm just going to go into the third person character and add a couple of blueprint nodes because I'm always going to be the third person character and that's what goes with me through all the maps. And I don't have to worry about like creating a game state and a, a game mode and all the other kind of stuff you would do if you're trying to make a more robust uh, project. This is just a, a quick, easy hack. I, st I literally stumbled across this on accident. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a, uh, a new map. Because we have to, we're going to start here. This is going to be like our menu. And I'm going to create a new map. Sorry, new folder. Call Oops. And then create a map. And I'm going to create a map like this. New level. And let's do a basic one. Cool. And then I'm going to save it. Maybe it's like move something. Doink. Okay. Take it. Change something. Now let me save. Create in my maps folder. I'm called one lobby. Cool. And then in my third person character, I can come over to my world settings. Or actually go back to the, the other map. I'm gonna filter my maps. Other levels. Third person map which we have a game mode already loaded in by default. And that game mode is basically saying, hey, use the third person character, which is down here, which is our, we consider our pawn, the thing we're controlling. I'm gonna go over to here and this can be done in one, one blueprint node, but I'm gonna add a couple of to, a couple extra to make a little bit of uh, more f uh, ease of use. Um, you cannot play multiplayer games in editor. You have to do them as a standalone game. Uh, we, you can always run a standalone game uh, from the editor, right? But coming down to standalone game, you don't have to make it executable, but you can't just do it in select the viewport. And when if you when if you ever do a standalone game, you'll realize that uh, Shift F1 or Escape doesn't actually escape out. So the first thing I do, just for ease of use, is Escape key equals quit. There you go. And then the next thing we're going to do is the key of one is going to open a map. The level, and what's a level called? We've called it lobby. All right, and there's some advanced features. And the option I'm going to do here is I'm gonna put in the word, listen. Hmm, am I creating a listen server? All right, and now, what's the other button we're gonna do? Key of two. We're gonna say um, open 
we're going to say uh, execute a console command. So again, you wouldn't have to write, write a blueprint node. You can just do this within the console. And we're going to connect to my VPN IP. All right, so I'm going to say open. And then 192.168.196.2. Right? And we have that spreadsheet that we've been using uh, where we've been logging um, our uh, our IPs. And so right now it's going to be kind of hardwired to be my IP. If somebody else is going to be a listen server, we'd have to just change the blueprint node to be their um, IP. But essentially everyone on the RVPN can play this game. Right? So... Uh, I'm going to save this, but I'm not going to use this project because it has to be the same exact project. Um, that's why I've already uploaded one and had you guys download it. Um, otherwise, I'd have to now zip this up and upload it and et cetera, et cetera. So put the put the chicken pot pie in the oven, and now I pull it out of the oven. And everyone, please feel free to open up your multiplayer game you downloaded from Google Drive, and you should be in the third person example map. Purchasing. Right? So when you play, do not hit play and select a viewport. Come down to standalone game. All right? It'll take a little bit longer to open up. But it's going to put up a standalone, like it was an executable game. All right, so we don't see each other. We haven't done, we haven't done anything. We have nothing in the blueprints. So if I hit escape, it would close the window. If I hit one, which don't hit one, no one hit one. No one hit one. I'm going to hit one. I have now opened up the lobby and started a listen server. If you guys hit two, everyone hit two. Let's see if it works. There you go. Multiplayer game. I've never stress tested this. I've never done this with more than three computers, so it might not work. But we have a multiplayer game now. Again, sometimes you have to restart the VPN. If you haven't been on zero tier in a while, or if you haven't turned it off, turn it off zero tier, turn it back on. But um, essentially, uh, we should have, we should be able to see if we can put this up to 16 people right now. And again, the whole rest of the semester is interactive, so do bring your production computer to, to, to class or be able to remote into a production computer. Um, so who's, who's playing with me right now? Who's here? All right. Any, anyone else going to give it a shot? Or is anyone else not having any luck and, and you are trying? You're trying? Okay. Okay, so you have to join the zero tier. So um, what I'll do is, to catch you up on that, is do you have Slack on that computer? Okay, that's what I was going to. So yeah, get get on the so this, get on the virtual production one because that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. So again, I will put uh, the spreadsheet on the general channel. It's also in documents and demos, just so you can find really quickly the um, the VPN address. I'll put also in documents demos. It's coming back. Cool. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so yeah, for for the you know for for the rest of today, uh, it all is. Uh, predicated on us being able to communicate uh, in this classroom over the VPN. Uh, that's today's whole lesson. So um, this is this is an example to get us started. Um, uh, everyone who needs to reconnect the VPN or download stuff, we're going to start from scratch uh, with another project. But I just want to show you a couple nodes, multiplayer, pretty effective, awesome. And then escape. Escapes. Oh, somebody just joined. Ah. <laughs> And then I, I, everyone else crashed, right? I just, I, yeah, you, you got sent. 
don't worry. We have a better one. This was just showing you that it could be done simply. Uh, we're going to do something that's much more complex, and, and it's, it's harder to reverse engineer it. And I want to let you know that you can make it simply from scratch, but we're going to use something a little bit more advanced and jump ahead. Cool. So what have, what have I just been talking about? What are we all joining? We're all joining a three letters. A VPN, right? It's a virtual private network. So it's about to start getting crazy. Today we're going to join an SVN using our VPN, right? Next week we'll do OSC over the SVN with the VPN, right? So just going over our terminology. Um, today we're going to be uh, learning how to do uh, cloud storage and version control. Cool. Uh, I just have a couple of context contextual slides and then we'll actually just like dive into doing this, okay? Um, so we want to be able to have version control, right? So like a lot of people here, if you've done JavaScript, do uh, GitHub, right? Um, so we want to be able to save different versions so that we can recover our previous work. Um, but we also want to be able to store it in a centralized location for everyone to be able to grab it, right? So it's version control and source control. We're kind of... We're going to kind of use those interchangeably today. Uh, when I mean version control, I usually mean source control in a, in a cloud, right? Um, so uh, subversion is very old. We'll get into that in a second. Today, we're going to, here's instructions for how to use subversion, right? Like I just said, version control tracks changes to a project, so a set of files, a folder, individual file, uh, and so you can recall versions from before. right? So the whole the terminology here is reverting. You can revert back to a previous revision. Uh, you can do the entire project, and this way you never lose your work, right? Uh, I'll even show you today how to do that locally, so you don't even have to worry about a cloud storage. You can just do it so that you don't lose stuff in your own project. If you're working on your thesis, you can recover your something from six months ago, and it's not a big deal. It just takes storage, right, which is why we cleared off our computers at the beginning of the semester, right? So this is really great if you're, for, if you're screwing things up. Um, and uh, uh, you can always fix it, right? So a lot of times when I when I consult on projects and I um, I get people on version control, the first thing they do is delete the entire repository. Like, hey, buddy, it's your first day of work and you uh, just threw away three million dollars worth of work, and then they freak out. And I'm like, well, then pay attention next time. I'll fix it. I can save anything. And the rest of the semester, as we make mistakes, I encourage you not to try to fuck things up. But as you make mistakes naturally. We will spend the beginning of every class fixing them so you can see how to fix and show you that this is our vault. We can do whatever we want to. We can always recover our work. And that's what's what's key is the bigger the mistake, the maybe the more time it will take to fix it. But we're safe and just feel free. And the, the whole idea is this is how they, you're going to work professionally. You're going to be sharing projects with teams. You need to work to learn that um, social etiquette of how to, how to uh, share projects. So uh, we're beginning that process now. Right? So again, we can have localized, centralized. Um, you can create a localized one that's also centralized. You can put a centralized one within a, within a localized. You can nest and recursively nest your, your version control. So uh, what are the different version control systems or solutions for UE, UE4? Um, a lot of these things, yeah, I'm going to differentiate between the client interface, what does the GUI look like, and then what is, how, how is it hosted, right? Sometimes it's the same service. Sometimes there's a different ser hosting service and a different GUI for it. Right, so. Plastic SCM, Source Control Management SCM, um, is uh, a newer ver version of uh, version control, and it's specifically designed for Unreal. Here I say UE4, but I also mean UE5. Um, the, uh, it is a one-stop shop, so it, it is the interface, and it is the storage solution. So you're going to... You know, you have to get their, their software, and then you have to pay for the hosting, right? It's supposed to be easy, intuitive. Christopher, you tried using it back in the summer. Did you ever get it up and running? Was it fine? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty pretty straightforward. It's fast. Yeah. Um, the industry standard is per force. Um, it's expensive. Um, it is uh, also scary in that usually people delete the project the first thing they do. They install Perforce to their C drive. They realize how big the project is. Like, oh, I need to put my storage drive. They take the folder and move it over to their storage drive, and it deletes the project from the server. So, um, yeah, don't do that. Uh, but if you're going to do it, do it do it with students. Don't do it for a client, right? Um, they've said they're going to come up with a more intuitive interface for students, for artists, like that. Um, but uh, so Perforce is uh, the storage solution. 
P4V is a software interface for it, and you can use it for up to five users. Each user gets a workspace, gets four workspaces, so you can have essentially 20 users can actually kind of get in there for free. Um, and then it gets very expensive. Um, you can use GitHub for um, uh, Unreal. I don't know, has anyone ever used GitHub for Unreal here? You have to use LFS, large file system. Um, the beauty of GitHub is that it merges text files and Unreal isn't text files. It's these binary files called .u assets. There's no, it doesn't leverage any of the beauty of GitHub. So there's really no reason to use GitHub for Unreal. And in fact, it's, it's not often used. And then what we're using today is Subversion uh, or otherwise known as SVN. Uh, it is 25 years old. It's open source, it's free. My hosting provider um, gives it to me for like $6 a year for unlimited. So I, I ultimately, any project that's made in New York City is pretty much hosted on my 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 website. Um, it's you know people try to do the proportion like ah oh, it's going to cost too much money let's just do your thing for free and that's what we're going to be using today. All the concepts for using Subversion are the same for using all the other systems. So uh, it's still we're just doing it because I'm being cheap. Um, now my hosting provider DreamHost just removed uh, Subversion a week ago, but they gave me a backdoor link um, and I have been testing it. It does seem to be working. So you know the whole point of Version control is that it might go away. We'll see what happens. We're gonna roll the dice. We'll always have a local version, All right? So uh, this is the part where you're gonna click along with me. This is what's different from the previous uh, classes this semester is that uh, I want everyone to try to, to tag along. It's, I consider this to be like Lord, the movie Lord of the Rings. Like we'll all start off as a group, but by the end there are gonna be like a fraction of us that make it all the way, you know? And that's, you know, sometimes if you're like, oh, help the Balrog has me, you're like, sorry, you gotta go. We have to move forward. We have to take the ring to Mordor, so. Um, that's the metaphor, uh, but hopefully we can try to get everyone there. Um, usually by, you know, a couple more class sessions, everyone can make it all the way to, to all the steps, all right? And uh, so uh, if you were going not to be doing, um, a, like, my hosting provider, Assembla is the first place to go to, uh, to, to for storage, for, for cloud storage. Uh, it also does Perforce and other ones as well. And uh, so my dream host, let me show you what that looks like. Really simple. You're not having to do any, like, uh, scripting or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a little dashboard. So never know where to put the. Okay, all right. So here's my link, and so here's every project that's. <laughs> yeah, um, and at the very very bottom, I've already made one. I've been testing for uh, for us. Okay, if again, if you go to this little spreadsheet. Uh, I've made a link to that repository, and everyone has their own username and password. And the username and password is just so that we can say, oh, Kerr, you still have this file checked out. Can you check it back in? I'm going to do something with it. And like you get on Gchat or Slack or whatever, and you just like talk to each other, and you just have to be uh, mindful neighbors and say, hey, you have the file. Hey, I need to add something to it. And you start communicating with your team. Kerr, I wasn't, point I wasn't making an example of you. I just was, your name was first. So, um, so. Uh, how do you interface with um, uh, this URL, right? If you click on it, it's just a website, and it's like, yeah, that's not the way to do anything with it. So um, for back to the presentation, for Windows, it's called Tortoise SVN. It's 100% free. Um, it's been around. Make sure you install the 64-bit version. And uh, it's just an executable, and it is uh, called a... Uh, con it basically creates a context uh, sensitive menu. Just like we did, said context sensitive in our blueprints, we right click into everything that's selected in my outliner. Um, when I right click into a Windows folder, let's go to my Unreal projects, and I'll just say, well, I have it right there, but I'll do it again. I'll delete this one. Tweet. Oh, that's way too much. Oops. I know that's last year's what. Never mind. New new project. Okay, so new folder. So I'm going to call this one uh, VPD Final uh, Jupiter 2022. And then I usually put WC, knowing that it's a working copy. Other ones could be trash files, or that once a project's no longer active, I take off the WC. And there's a way for me to easily see which projects are, are actively being worked on on my computer. All right. Go over to the, um, again, back to that spreadsheet, grab your link.
and then I'll show you how to set it up on Windows, and then I'll remote them to my, my Mac and show you how to set up on Mac. All right, so here's my new folder. Right-click in, and here's your context-sensitive menu for Tortoise SVN. Right now, it's very limited uh, because we don't have a repository here. It's just saying you could have a repository here. So we're going to say SVN Checkout. It automatically takes what's in my clipboard and puts it into URL. Automatically loads in because I right-clicked in that folder where it's going to go. Don't touch a other button or, or link and just say OK. And then ask me for my username and password. And then I say OK. And then a cool little window opens up. And it says, I'm at revision zero. We have not added anything to the repository. Revisions, revision zero. OK. Um, makes sense. I'll go through the slides, which do the same thing, just so you can see it with maybe bigger pictures. So we're installing Tortoise, right? Um, then once you have Tortoise installed, you will have context-sensitive um, options for Tortoise in your right-click context menu, right? And the first thing you want to do is check out a repository. It just so happens that repository is empty, but we're, we're making a connection between the folder and the cloud, right? So you're, you're, you can, you're basically connecting your folder on your computer to an empty folder on my uh, domain. Cool? Then, when, the, when you uh, say check out, you have a chance to then put in uh, the correct URL. That's not the correct URL because I did not update this presentation. And then it automatically knows the checkout directory because I right-clicked in that directory. You can always change the directory if you want to. When I hit OK, username and password, and it will be revision zero. All right. Um, in a second, we'll get to the next steps. Now that you have a repository connected, you're going to have different context-sensitive um, options. And the main two are update, which has an arrow pointing down, and commit, which has an arrow pointing up. So update is coming down to my computer, and commit is going up to the cloud, right? I'm pulling data, and I'm pushing it back up, right? So uh, update, pull, or... Um, uh, or commit and push, all right? Um, and those are the main ones. If nothing goes wrong, that's all you have to do, all right? It's just those two buttons. You're just going to be, every time I sit down, I want to make sure I have the freshest version of my project so I'm not missing any anyone else's co contributions. And every time I leave for a break or every time somebody needs an asset, I can push it. Right now we're doing it in the main root folder, but you can do this with individual folders, individual um, assets. You could do it with just certain things. Hey, can you send me that one file? I'm not ready to give you everything, but I can send you this one. You know, so again, it's about communication and sending. And and again, this is the kind of stuff that might seem boring now, but as we do it, you'll see how it's relevant, and it'll add more um, uh, context to it as we uh, as we do it more and more. All right? When I push a uh, a thing, which we'll, let's do it live. So I'm going to make a little text file here. I'm going to say hello from Todd. So just anywhere, I can either select the file or select empty space. I say uh, now commit, right? And then it says, uh, what files do I want to commit? You know, sometimes you can add a whole bunch of files. You do want to give it a cursory look to make sure you're not uploading the wrong thing, something that's not ready. Um, something if it's if it's never been added before it won't it, it doesn't know it's it's called it's non-versioned right it doesn't have a it doesn't know about it sometimes when you added a whole new folder like a whole new marketplace things you do have to right click and then start going into some of the tortoise SVN things like I need to add it to the repository first for it to know about it so I could have done that as add or I could have checked it off when I when I open up the commitment menu. Do, do, do. Let's try that again. Do, do, do. Right. And so now the context menu has changed again. And I can commit. And now it's it it it's like highlighted hyperlink. It knows it's versioned, right? I've added it before, whereas before it was unversioned. I could have made it anyway. I checked it off and I say initial commit. Done. We're at revision two. Maybe somebody else has already added something. I'm going to now update. And I have meow.txt, which is what I always wanted. All right. 
So if you're on a PC, feel free to, to add a text file for your name. We can always throw them away later on. Just, just give it a test to make sure everything works. You're not getting errors. If you're going to get errors, better do it now while we're live in class versus you know later on some other time. While you're doing that and clicking around on your PCs, I will show you how to do it on a Mac. Um, you guys got a Mac. So we got some Macs folks here. So on a Mac, it's not called Tortoise. It's called Snail SVM. Snail SVM Lite is the free version. They actually want you to pay if you're going to use more than one repository. If you're just doing the final project, you can just do it with Snail SVN uh, Lite. Um, what do we gather about subversion? It's slow. Tortoise and Snail. They're not giving you any like faith in their speed of uploading and downloading. But you know what tastes great? Things that are free. So, <laughs> and if you're on a Mac, ins install Snail SVN Lite. Um, and then uh, it will ask you to um, give permission to access the folders. Anyone who uses a Mac knows this has been the case for the last two years is that you have to give permission to access certain folders. So it will even give you a hyperlink in the software interface uh, to directly link to your system preferences to give access to folders. So if I go on any desk, I've already got this installed on my computer at home. Uh, but I can show you how to connect it to the repository. And it looks identical, which is what's great. Um, just, a, just a little shout out. This is this is my farmhouse. Okay. There you go. Um, so I have a Mac. Surprising, right? Um, snail, when it's turned on, has this little snail shell in the top. And you can say... Uh, check out, you can say so show snail, you can say preferences, whatever. Uh, you want to get to here, to the preferences. And then, uh, again, you can only have one copy, uh, one working copy active. You can always make it not the active working copy and keep it on your hard drive, but you can only have one copy that's going up and down between uh, the, uh, the, the cloud and computer. So I'm going to say check out an SVN working copy. And let's Grab it again. Copy. Put it in the URL. <clears throat> For this one, because I didn't right click into a, an empty folder, I have to choose which folder it's going to go to. Uh, it's going to open up my Unreal uh, projects. I'm going to make a new folder called VPD 2022 working copy. And then say select. Say OK. It already has my username and password because I already tested this once. Uh, and then I say OK. And then now I have uh, the project. And I see Christopher. I see hello from Todd. I see meow. That says meow, 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 meow. Or, or, or is it meow, 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 meow. So this is from my Mac. Save. And then I can upload it. And then now I've said hi from my Mac. I say Todd added from Mac. It's good to, to make a pretty decent list of things. You'll see that auto completes with, with files that are already in your, your, your projects. Um, it's good to it's good to leave a lot of notes so people know what's going on. Cool. So done with my Mac for now. Closing. Any desk, come back down. And there, Nini says hi. Yeah, we're getting up to speed. Um, I have hidden files that are on my, uh, uh, that are visible in my windows. You use like a folder option. So you can see I have this like grayed out .svn. That's all the versions are like kind of stored locally. Um, you can't just delete that folder if you want to take it out of version control. Um, like if you put this folder onto a hard drive, it would still be connected to version control. You need, if you want to export out of version control, you need to use the command export. Just we'll let you know, like what's the part of the architecture of SVN is that SVN is actually um, a hidden folder structure within all these, every single folder. Cool. So everyone should um, be testing their VPN. Everyone should be trying to test uh, now the SVN. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. So this one's going away. You can keep it souvenir from class, my first multiplayer game. And uh, I'm going to create a new project. 
And this will be our final. All right, we're gonna to go to a new, a new tab we've never been to before. Well, I'll wait for shaders to compile. Anyone have any questions? Anyone terrified? Yeah, go. So if I made a if I made a folder and I call it an SVN test or from copy and I want to change the not a problem. It's, it doesn't matter. No matter. The the root root folder that you make could be called whatever. It could be called nothing. Whatever. All right. So I'm going into architecture. I know, crazy. And I'm going to go to a thing called the collaborative viewer. You're not doing this. I'm doing this for you. Uh, just watch this. You know, feel free to keep on clicking if you need to get connected to the version control. And I'm going to call this one VPD final. <clears throat> and I'm going to create it at the root of my own projects. So when if I try to to uh, create this at the folder where we put all our text files, it actually Unreal would say, no, I can't install a project where there's already files. So what I'm going to do is just put it at the root, and I'll drag the project into there and then upload it. Okay. I'm going to go back to my presentation to make sure I'm not skipping any steps because I'm kind of off script here. Yep, yeah, talked about that. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're good. Um, cool. And again, before I add it in, maybe I want to download to make sure I have the freshest version. Let's see. All right, so this is the collaborative design template. It's an architectural template. Um, I'll go over the details, but for right now I want to start uploading because I don't want to get us any, into any bandwidth and bandwidth issues. So let me first of all close it, upload it, and then I'll talk about the, the template itself. We can pile shaders and all that fun jazz, right? So I have the folder that we're hanging out in. I'm updating. We're at vision six, right? If I wanted to get into some of these settings, there's a whole bunch of stuff. You will eventually touch all these different icons um, as we screw things up, and that's fine. Don't worry about learning them all right now. There is a book called Tortoise SVN. I don't recommend reading it from cover to cover. Um, but one of the cool things you do is the first option right here is to show the log. And if I show the log, I can see, this is why you guys have unique logins, I can see what happened each each step of the way, right? Um, who added things, who deleted things, what the message was that they uh, said to us. So this is a really quick way to say, oh crap, the thing I wanna do is back there, right? And I can revert back to that revision. I can do it for, again for every, for the entire project, for just folders or just individual files themselves. Cool, um, let's go. To, to my Unreal projects, take the final, and I'm gonna throw it in here. No problem. When you open up a, uh, um, a project, it will um, uh, you know create these intermediate and save folders. We don't need that. That's like local crash log information that can get kind of really bulky. It's also screenshots and things that you know we don't wanna share back and forth. So I don't really wanna add everything. I just wanna share uh, what's the essential stuff. Um, I'm going to first of all add the whole folder so it knows about all the files. So I say add. It'll say, are you sure? And I'm like, why not? And it's going to give me a little mend. Maybe it won't, maybe it will, I don't know. All right, so now uh, I'm going to go back to our, uh, I'm going to go to, actually what I'm going to do is create a folder for, or, or sorry, another channel. for week nine. Week oh nine, collaborative multiplayer. And then um, just in case you need the documentation, uh, UE5, SVN, using subversion as your source control. And that lives now in week nine. Cool. So setting up a server, we have already done that. Um, 
Uh, this is creating a local subversion. So if you want to create a local repository, follow those instructions to create a repository that's on your local computer. Uh, we're pulling a repository from a network. And um, we have, so we're checking out. And then this um, is the image I'm trying to get us to, which is what do you want to uh, connect and what do you not want to connect? We are going to share the U project. We're not using uh, C++, we don't have to worry about the source, but we do want to share our config, config and content. Uh, so those have all been added. I'm going to come back to my folder. And I'm going to take the other ones, intermediate and saved, and derived data cache. And I'm going to go down to Tortoise and say, unversion and ignore. So when I now upload, right click, commit, you will see that those aren't included on my list of things that could be uploaded. It's just the things in the content folder. All right, this is 95 megabytes. I tested earlier today. Um, so let's go ahead and say initial commit of project. And then this will probably take a few moments. Right now it's just adding it. Then it will actually individually upload each, each file. So, you know, whenever you want your boss to think you're busy, just put this, this thing up. Be like, oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm processing. I'm getting into the matrix. Um, it, it'll take, like, maybe two or three minutes, and you guys can pull down. If you, if you pull down now, nothing will happen until it's completely finished. Um, my battery's running low. That's why it might be running, running so low. Ah, somebody turned off the power strips. Good to know. Always something. Mm -hmm. Talk. Sure. Like, uh, is this like a saved in, in the cloud or in my local computer? Well, we've been doing this whole process is being saved on my uh, my my d domain provider. Everything is going to be on Todd SVN .todd .com. So it's in the cloud. So it will not affect my storage in my. Computer. No, but when you pull it on your computer, it's going to be on your computer too. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone has a version that's uh, you're working locally and then pushing and pulling files as asynchronously, right? Um, yes, Chris. Just like go back to like in the log, like with an earlier version of the project, change things and then re-update. That's fine. You you'll the newer changes will probably be unless you make a branch, the newest changes will be lost. Right. So if you do revert to previous revision, you you, you usually usually because you don't want to, the ones you have now. If you want to keep the newest revisions and go back to a previous version, you need to make a branch. Again, that's when you start referencing the documentation for Tortoise SVN and reading the reading that. And there is a button for branch right when you right click. And again, at the beginning of every class, I will pull all the all the stuff, and we will go through all the error messages together and, and just assess all that stuff out. And you know, the more mistakes we make, the uh, uh, the more we learn from the process. Right. So this is uploading. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, for time's sake, I'm going to go through the project and give you guys the layout of what we're going to do. And then if it's ready, we'll do a demo or us all working together. And then I'll go over what we'll do for the homework. Oh, we're way ahead of schedule. Yeah, we're only an hour into class. This is great. All right. So um, by default, uh, the collaborative uh, um, design template opens up in this architectural um, map. But as we know from talking about streaming uh, maps and sub-levels from uh, the midterm, uh, it is not always what it appears to be. This is actually, oh, well, it is. And that's crazy. I literally just looked at this a second ago, like at home. Let's see. It's not using the partition. This is hilarious. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, well, whatever. I'll, I'll roll with the punches. This is 5 1, right? Or 5 0. I promise you, I practice these things. 
I just did this. If I delete the project and I made a new one, something different. Anyway, so uh, this is just going to be a persistent level, and we, we will figure it out on the fly how to make this interchangeable. So essentially, this is just their map. Normally, it's a submap, and I could just switch out the submap, and the main map is what always has the multiplayer information in it. This is not the same way, and we'll, we'll figure it out live with you folks. But um, maybe it's when you add starter content. That's what it is. When you add starter content, it makes it as a submap. But I don't want it to be a big project file, so we'll rough it for right now. So anyway, um, the, here is your collaborative uh, template. Do, 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 do. It has a few features, and it has its own game mode. All right, for now, I'm just going to hit the play button. So by default, I can fly around with WASD, which we've seen before. But you might notice that there's also uh, a GUI involved with this, right? There's a, a what's called a, a widget, right? So I have fly mode, which is WSD. I have walk mode, oops, which then I'm walking around like a normal person, right? This is missing a lot of features. This is weird. Um, then I have uh, orbit mode where I can like look at an object and orbit around it, which obviously wasn't the greatest thing. There we go. So I can point at something and say, I really want to look at that tree. I, whatever, I can do that. Then I could do VR. Do not hit the VR button. You want to do VR preview. If you hit the VR button in this interface, it'll crash your, 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 your pr program. So, but if I want to, if I start off with VR by VR preview, then I can take off VR and add VR back on. And then it gives you controllers and whatever. I haven't actually done it in a while. Um, so those are some things that are here. Um, you can um, make alterations. You can move things around. And you can change different states. This is about having multiple people inside of a level editing together, revising things together, adding in notes, adding in drawings, adding in measurements, and then saving different states of that map so that you can come back and look at them later. This could be any of our maps we make for the final. We can go in and do location scouting and no notate to each other, uh, set up different like bookmarks for we know where certain vignettes are. And this is a really great uh, functionality. So this is the root game mode for the rest of our, 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 our class project. Right, so I can uh, you know save different states, and then uh, because you can be in your headsets or whatever, we also have um, muting of microphones. So we can talk to each other back and forth. Uh, for everyone who's playing along today, feel free to pull the repo. Uh, we're at revision nine. It's only uh, ninety-five megabytes, so it shouldn't be an issue to have be done by the time I'm done with the demo. Okay, and then now when I'm in play, the other thing is spacebar. So spacebar gives me a lot of other features. I have transform, right? I can move things around. I can grab a tree and move it around, right? I can grab a wall, move it. Now, if I hit stop, it'll go back to the way it was before, but I can always save a state if I need to and come back to the save state, right? So it's other things we could do. We could annotate so I can paint a stroke. I said paint a stroke. There we go. So I'm painting. This is actually a three-dimensional sculpture. All right. Let me get out of this orbit mode. There we go. That was what was annoying. All right. Three-dimensional grease pencil. All right. That's at space bar. Uh, we have snapshot. Obviously, take screenshots of this stuff. Uh, X-ray. We can look into things. But it has to be... Uh, Usually there's something in the lobby that has uh, an X-ray and it's not there for right now. Let's see, isolate. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, measurements, right, it can be super useful. Right, you're like, space bar, add, yes. You think of easier to use. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. Uh, we can change scale. Uh, we have bookmarks. So we have bookmarks set throughout. Right? So like we, can, we can check out different bookmarks. Uh, you can uh, create bookmarks on the fly. You can say create bookmark. And then here's a new bookmark. That's spacebar, apparently. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Add. And then now when I go back to hit spacebar, Blah, blah, blah is there. 
So on the fly, we can say, hey, Kim, follow me. I'm over here. And then we can all go to that, where that one person is and hang out. You got to see the usefulness of all this, right? Um, and then you can do 3D cutout. Again, I haven't done a lot of this stuff. Um, there's a, a video that um, is in the syllabus that goes into this in more depth. Cool. Oh, it's because I got rid of the the explode one. There's exploding gears. Oh, I would think get rid of that. That was really fun. Oh, there's the 3D cutout. All right. All right, so I'm cutting out. That's that's fun. Little cross sections. All right, what else do we have? Space bar. I'll try the measurement again. That should work. Delete. Yes, delete. Sure. Yeah, sure. What could go wrong? You guys. I don't know why the measurement is. I'm doing something wrong. Is it like a. Anyway. Um, okay, cool. So, and then I hit stop. And um, you see all that stuff is gone. All right, so what are the things around here? This is where we're all going to spawn, right? And then here's our bookmarks. All right, these are little bookmarks. They're little blueprints. So what we're going to do is um, look at the folder structure. If we go to Collaborative Viewer, we'll see we have blueprints. Here are the blueprints for all the things we just saw in that menu. Here's the blueprints for... Um, for, uh, let's see, tools, nope, for commands, sorry, all the things in the windows are called commands. So annotation, bookmarks, crop boxes, data smith, dimensions, explodes, everything is there and we can uh, make instances of them, right? Um, I am gonna kind of start off by doing the homework while people are still uh, uh, downloading and installing and everything like that. So for the homework, what I want you to do is to contribute to this project for the first time and, and learn how to be good citizens and neighbors, all right? We're going to create a folder for assets. In that folder, we're going to have a folder for, oh, blueprints. We're going to do the whole thing. We're going to do folder for maps. And, oh, it's today. A folder for materials. Cool. I'm going to create a blank map. And it's going to be called LVL Todd. And I'm going to go into my map. I'm going to save. Completely blank. That's okay. I'm going to add in a uh, sphere. Or I'll, I'll go crazy about a cone. All right, so cone. We can't see it, so let's add in a light. Uh, how about a spotlight? Now we can see our cone, All right? Then uh, let's give a little um, love to our, our cone. I'm going to make M main, All right? M main is going to have a three vec that we're able to parameter name of color to. And it's going to have an emissive. Nope. Not what I wanted. We're just going to give it a scalar parameter called glow. And then we're going to multiply color by our glow. All right. Save. Close. 
And then I'm gonna make an instance of that. And it's gonna be called MI for material instance pod. Apply. And then dial in my parameters. Glow, color, one. Oh heck, let's do five. And a nice purple pink. I did not do that right. Nice purple pink. And then all the way. Cool. Save. Okay. Right. So now I have a sub map. Uh, now I've made a map, right? And it's called LVL Todd. Save all. And then let's go to our maps. Look for levels. Uh, we want to go into sample level. In our levels tab here, we're going to add in add existing assets maps LVL Todd. And right now, you barely see it's the active map. So anything I add in now is going to be in that map. It's not going to be other map. Um, right now, it has a little blue dot next to it. it means it's only loaded via blueprints. We want it to always be available. So always loaded. Cool. And then where is my map? There's my stuff. All right. So a couple of, um, of, of options here is uh, you could say only show me things in current level in my outliner. And now it's just my, my, my two objects, right? Because I only have one active map, All right? But then you have to remember to turn that off. We want to see everything that's in both maps, right? So I could say only show me things in this map. And then I could select both of them and move them wherever I want. All right? So I can go to the rooftop if I want to. But also, What's kind of fun is that if I select my level and I always forget where this one is, level details, I actually have um, other things I could do. Like I can say, edit my viewport and I'm moving my entire map. Right? So not just those two objects in my map, I'm moving my entire origin of my map. Right? Or I can rotate my origin in the yaw. All right, so that's another cool thing. That's just those things. Okay, great. That's viewport edit. So that could be op that could be nice when if you're like putting in a sub map and you realize it's completely the wrong thing. I don't know where the widget went. There it is. So that rotates everything. Cool, but maybe now I just want to come back to my object, close this one, and just find those two objects, and just get the origin here. So here's my my thing. Now, how do I show you guys where it is? Well, we saw that there was a thing called a bookmark. So we go over to blueprints that are part of the assets. In the collaborative viewer, that mean commands, blueprint, bookmark, sorry, BP bookmark. Put it in here. And you see, it's actually a camera. I can right click and say pilot. Find my thing and frame it up the way I want. Eject out. There's this thing where it scaled itself up, up a thousand times. It's going to happen to everyone. If you, it's only if you pilot it. I don't know. I, I should submit that. Just say go back to one. Anyway, um, and then uh, on, under underneath the settings, my bookmark name, and this is called Todd Mark. All right, and so now when I hit play. Spacebar, bookmarks, there is Todd Mark, and it's up there, right? 
that's the homework. Well, that's the homework inside the game engine is for everyone to make their own level, find an object, don't add anything from the marketplace, just a primitive, add a material instance. It's all listed out line by line, everything to do. Make a bookmark, put your name on the bookmark, and then we can do a show and tell, hide and seek, scavenger hunt next week where everyone joins in and we're all in, you know, in the same multiplayer game. Right? So this is how we're going to increment into doing multi-user editing. Right? So I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to save all. Yeah. So that's why I used a blank map because I didn't want to add in two atmospheres and two um, post processes. So my map is just completely blank and I'm just adding in uh, the spotlight, which is in my map. All right. So if, what, if I already close it, so we go back here and I got my levels. The spotlight is, is gone when I hide my, my level. All right. So I'm going to close, save all, upload. These things weren't versioned. I make sure I check everything out and then say, uh, Todd did his homework early. <laughs> A plus, plus, plus. <laughs> Give it a second. Done. Now everyone pull. <clears throat> Now let's see how many people we get in. Once you have my stuff downloaded, open up the project. If you don't download my download my stuff, you just won't see what I put in, right? You'll have the wrong version, but you'll still be able to connect multiplayer, and then we can gaslight each other. Be like, no, I uploaded everything. Why don't you see this? You must be crazy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's saying you're you're not in sync anymore with me. It says that no something in the cloud is different from what you have locally. Um, do it, hit F five for refresh, or exit out of the folder and come back in. Did it update? It's still not. That's fine. Uh, sure. Make sure you're not, make sure you're updating in the root folder. Um, config folder is not a huge uh, conflict issue. Um, I, I, again, so uh, the um, what you're pointing out is that uh, Tortoise, if you don't have certain applications installed, Tortoise will give you green check marks and red X's and that kind of stuff. Mine, it doesn't. Dropbox, I use Dropbox so heavily that I'm actually, my, my file system is out of little icons I can put on folders. So I have to go into my registry and actually change that. I'm not going to worry about it. But you won't see check marks and, and, and X's on my um, my thing. <laughs> um, you should be fine. Config folder is not a big deal. OK? I was also wondering, um, those computers that we get having like a known issue with the Red X12, it doesn't bring you in 12. If I could still run it, would that have a problem? So that would change the config file. Then it would reflect back in everyone else's computer. Yeah, and if you did, we can always switch it back. It's not going to be a big issue. Okay. Oh, in the log? It doesn't matter. It means I made a change to a file. Uh, yeah, at that version, I made a change to the text. It was my text file. And I got red in the main on the base file. Then you hit F5 for refresh. Or right click and say refresh. I've also realized that I, I have not finished all my, my glorious slides um, the, while everyone's still sorting things out. Uh, the next thing to do as everyone opens up the project is you can actually use Unreal as a client instead of Tortoise itself. It's a little bit slower, so I usually don't, but it's super important if you have 20 people working the same project that when I'm editing a file, no one else can edit that same file. It's going to in real time block people from using the same project files, which is why we use sub levels, right? So people aren't checking out all the main level by themselves. So I'm going to go up to, well, I'll go down to source control. I right hear the bottom right now these days and say connect to source control. It's going to open up what my provider is. 
You might see some things called subversion, plastic, get, perforce. These are all familiar things to us. Uh, we're going to use subversion. And then I can now put this information from uh, our uh, login in directly into Unreal. Again, it slows things down, but it makes things safe so that we don't, because um, that's the ping home before it will allow you to make any change or up any file. All right, I don't know what labels directory is. One, two, three. Now, when I say accept settings, there's a check mark in the bottom right, and it means I'm connected to source control. So if I want to make an edit to BP bookmark, I right click, go to source control, say check out. It's going to be a blue arrow on my side, or a red arrow on my side, and it'll be a blue arrow on your side, and it's going to say Todd. And it's going to say, who has it checked out? Oh, it says Todd checks this out. I right, see how this is super useful to ping each other. You can say, um, Todd, let go. And I could say, okay, check back in. And now it says, what are you doing? It's like checking it back in or, you know, curve is curse first in my spreadsheet. And then it gave me the option to keep my files checked out if I want to give them a current version, but keep the file in ownership or check it back in. So I checked it back in, we're at now version 12. So I'm within the Unreal Engine. This is fine for individual files. I find it too slow for doing massive changes. If I can do a massive upload, I close out Unreal and then upload it using Tortoise context menu, okay? So I didn't really make any changes, so version 12 doesn't make a big difference. Hopefully some folks are downloading the repository and we have some people trying, all right? And uh, we are not gonna be in this map to start off with though, all right? There's one map we haven't touched yet, and it's called dun, 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 Login Level. So everyone go to Login Level. So I can see here already that Sample Level has some changes. There's an exclamation point. Right, this is good news. Things are happening. I can always refresh and see if somebody checked it back in. Or I can sync, which will pull it down from the cloud. Maybe I should have done that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Again, it's not as quick to do it inside of Unreal. I was just fl flying. Nice. All right, I put it back up. Christopher's trying to do his homework before he goes home. If, if it's schoolwork if you do it at school, Chris. Mm -hmm. It's schoolwork if you do it at school. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're 